Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures, and I know I haven't made a video in a few days. I've actually been sick and haven't been doing much, but I decided I wanted to make a video today to just share a few things for some nice visual inspiration. So first I thought I'd share some thrift finds, two things that I found at a consignment shop last weekend that um, are adding to some of my collections. And I like to collect, uh, I would say, dressing room pieces that could be perfume bottles, jewelry boxes, um, jewelry, sewing notions, linens, um, that type type of thing, picture frames. So I have this um, necklace that I purchased at an estate sale uh, several years ago. I would say at least six or seven years ago. It's a rhinestone necklace, but it is, uh, and actually I call anything sparkly a rhinestone. I don't know the difference between glass or rhinestone or paste or other things. So I call this rhinestone. Um, it is set in a sterling setting and it's marked Coro. I believe I paid about $10 for this, possibly 12 and at the time, it was definitely a splurge um, when I was at the sale. And I'm so happy that I picked it up. It's just very simple and elegant. It doesn't hang very long. And I used to have it around a picture frame, um, but recently I took it off and have it displayed in this room. But I think that I would wear it as well. And I just always been a piece that was one of my favorites so I was at this thrift consignment shop and they have a uh, area where they have uh, $10 jewelry. Anything is $10. They have beautiful pieces in there and I think that's a really great deal. So I found this piece that really reminded me of uh, this necklace. It has this nice deco clasp. It's in excellent condition. And it was Mark Sterling as well. And I thought, oh, now I have a nice set that would work so well together. And while $10 is not a yard sale price, I think that that's a really nice price for a piece of jewelry that uh, I enjoy. And then it completes a set. And sometimes I might find a lot of things to craft for for 50 cents or a dollar. And other times I find something like this for $10 that is something that I know that I will have forever. So the other piece is also adding to a collection that I have. It's a very small collection of one. <laughs> now, technically two. But I do collect these vintage and antique purses, beaded purses, um needlework and I have one of these silver wallets. You could uh, put it on a, a chatelaine, you could use it as a finger wallet, um, whatever you'd like to call it. So this one is engraved, it has this beautiful design on it, it does need to be polished, polish it about once a year. It has a mirror, it has space for um, coins and I've definitely put older coins in there and then a spot for powders. So I picked this up a few years ago at the hospital rummage sale, and it is the only one that I've ever come across, as they say, in the wild, where you can get your hands on it and look at it before you purchase it. And this past weekend, I came across another. And I obviously did not have this on me when I was shopping, but I didn't realize until I got home what a big size difference there is. This new one is twice as large. So I'm so sorry about all the bad reflections, but I don't know how I'm supposed to show something silver. It's got uh, the initial M and I'm not exactly, oh, I think it's an A. And on the inside, there is a name written. Just engraved so beautifully. And on the back, two other initials. So I polished it up. It was actually fairly polished to begin with. So you can see the silver difference there. A nice chain. 
and on the inside, and it's the inside that just really sealed the deal. So there's this little piece here that appears to be a type of paper, and it would probably hold coins. And then there's a mirror, and there's a silver matching pencil that works and has lead in it. And the fact that that was still in there And then you flip this over and I don't know if this is something that you would have taken notes on and then erased, but it says April 19th, 1913, Mariana, and I believe that says Arbaugh. So that would be the M and the A uh, engraved on the outside. And then I don't know what this says here. And then another little spot here that you could stick cards in, you know, anything. It was that pencil in there and I'm so excited to hang this on the wall and this could be a collection that grows probably very slow going because these are the only two that I've come across when I've been out and about uh, but I was happy to find that to add that to my collection. Here's another article in the Loving Brocant magazine and it's a feature on a doll maker and I love that little mushroom there. And there's these little tins with dolls and sheep. And I think she makes these handmade decorations. You can see her supplies there. They have a very vintage look to them. And here we have some displays from an article called Forever Christmas. And it says, the couple who they're visiting today affirms this in fact, they love this time so much that it's Christmas 365 days a year in their house. So this looks like one of those uh, either made in Japan or made in uh, Czechoslovakia glass beaded ornaments. And then we have a lace pillow with wax flowers and all of this black Victorian style, like capes and umbrellas and parasols and ribbons and feathers. Here we've got some chippy wood pieces of like a finial with some gloves, a little Christmas ornament and pearls. These pictures really speak to me. And this urn here with, I guess they're, they're hat pin flowers. Baby Jesus under a dome with some more wax flowers. Wax flowers um, and crowns are one of those things that I never really knew about. And I went to an estate sale and I wound up picking up one crown for $5. It was broken a little and I knew that I would repair it and the other one was maybe $10. And if I had known what I know now, I would have picked up both because they're very hard to find and they're very expensive. But they definitely are featured a lot in these brocante magazines. Little die cut on the tinsel Christmas tree topper. Glass birds, little boxes tied with lace. Christmas topper or Christmas tree topper. Christmas tree decorated with faces. Looks like a beaded pillow with a crown and some frames. Now this would normally be under a dome and I believe that it was given as wedding presents. And those are very hard to come across and expensive as well. Sometimes they have um, beveled mirrors on them. They're just so beautiful. A 
glass birds. And there's some more of those wax flowers around the neck of the dress form. A bowl filled with sparkly things. Even a vel two velvet purses hanging adorned with some Christmas ornaments. Look at those shoes. And that's so neat to stuff them to keep their shape and at the top have some lace come out. And then all the chalkware sheep. The other day I was in this room um, trying to redecorate with some of my new treasures, just find the perfect spot for them. Also, the name of the game the other day was condensing. If I had open containers or salt and pepper shakers, how could I put some of the things that I collect or use to craft together to make more space in my drawers, uh, make my displays not so cluttered. So the other day, I shared how I embellished this ball jar with um, th these little tags and buttons and pins, and inside I had some spools. I stuck it in the smaller jar, and I just felt like it was too cramped. So then I switched it to the larger jar. And then sometimes when I'm doing things like that, I really take stock at what I'm looking I'm collecting and displaying and I think is this something I couldn't live without or um, do I love all of it or which are my favorites so I went through and there was some wooden spools and buttons that you know at the time really grabbed my attention when I purchased them but then when I looked at them now I said you know what I think there's other things that I like better so I decided to take some of those supplies and move them to my crafting supplies and then I really didn't have a lot of spools to fill up this large container, but I did have a lot of lavender that I used in sachets and it was just in the plastic bag. Well, that wasn't very pretty. That lavender filled up these two vintage ball jars to the brim, just absolutely perfectly. And I really love that plain texture that lets this show off and um, I can, use it still to make my sachets but it's just a pretty way to display it when it's not being used and um i think i've always wanted to have a potpourri shop <laughs> when i put the lavender in there i thought oh my dream is coming true i'm owning my own potpourri shop in my house this is a recent watercolor that i did of my daughter and we did a little photo shoot I would say February of 2020 and I didn't get around to painting this for a while and I finished it maybe about a month ago but it's not technically watercolor paper so it wrinkled a little bit so I've had it under some books trying to flatten it before I frame it but I've got this radiating gold background and she's just being funny pretending to drink the perfume. I did a whole series of kids doing funny and unexpected things, and this is just going along with that series. And of course, it's a Chanel perfume. <laughs> so I'll leave you with a few of the meals that we've had over the past week, and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I've been up to what I've recently found and I'll see all of you in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye. I made chili and we had that with some sour cream and cheese. This is roast spaghetti squash and I made meat sauce and I'm also realizing that I forget to film a lot of our dinners. We had roast chicken and then the next night I turned that into chicken soup since we've been sick. Here is meatballs with tzatziki hummus, and a Greek salad on the side.